Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. We are back. This is the second installation of this head job on this 2016 Kia Optima. We got the head back from the machine shop. They said, yes, it is salvageable. So they just did a valve job on it. Replaced just one valve, cleaned up, reground the rest, get nice fresh seats, uh, clean it up real good. Let me show you. So this is our beautiful head, nice and shiny. You can see here is ugh, the ports here. Nice and clean. Underneath, you can see beautiful work. This is the one that was replaced, so this is cylinder number four exhaust. But see how clean everything is? Just looks really good. So on the block side, we wanna just clean this off really good, get any uh, oil and grit or anything that's left behind off. But we don't want to use any abrasives. If you use any kind of scraper, use a plastic scraper. You don't want to gouge any of these surfaces or leave scratch marks in it. We also want to blow out all our bolt holes. We don't want any coolant or oil left in the bottom. That can give us a false torque because fluid doesn't compress. So when you tighten it down, it'll butt up against that fluid, make it seem like it's tight when it's really not. And then that fluid will slowly seep around the threads up and we'll lose that, that compression. So we want to blow out, make sure they're all nice and dry every single hole. We're going to put a little RTV. If you can see right here, the timing goes all in this space. So there's a little RTV that gets applied right here on this little leg. So that oil doesn't flow over and cause a leak. And then also this side here, we don't want oil from our timing housing to get out. So the little RTV goes here as well. Then we put the gasket on and then a little RTV goes on top of the gasket for the same reason. Not anywhere in the field, just this little leg here, this little leg here because of our timing, it jets out. We don't want, want that leak. So let me set the camera up and we'll get all that taken care of. Okay, so for prepping the surface, we just got a couple of tools. Brake clean works really well, a plastic scraper and a lint-free rag. And all we're gonna do with the scraper is just get this RTV off here. Just get as much off as you can, perfect. And then brake clean with a lint-free rag. Just spray it on the rag and we're gonna get all our surface, our mating surface really well. Okay, around the cylinder. If you wanna clean off your piston tops, we still don't wanna use an abrasive. So just your rag, brake clean, and then just clean it off the best you can with it all the way at the top. Clean it off the best you can. If there's anything that gets in the gap in between the piston and the cylinder wall, we can get that by cranking the engine. Now that piston has dropped some. And then with our rag, we'll just wipe the cylinder wall really good. And if there's any carbon buildup at the very top lip of our cylinder wall, we'll go ahead and get that as well, which is a little brake clean and the rag. We can do that to all four. And then with our pistons at bottom dead center or all the way down, we can wipe off our cylinder wall and just make sure everything is really nice and clean. And then when they are at bottom dead center, see these two are at bottom dead center, clean gloves, take just a little bit of oil and we'll just coat our cylinder wall. This thing's been sitting for a couple of weeks while we've been waiting for our parts. So we're just gonna coat the cylinder wall just a smidge. We wanna do this after everything's clean. There we go. And then we won't get that dry start. And then we'll do that to our other two. Bring those down to bottom dead center. We'll do the same thing. A little bit of oil. All right, perfect. So now we'll bring cylinder one back up to top dead center and that'll be ready for our timing. Okay, something like that, it's pretty close. So now let's blow out our bolt holes. I have a piece of copper pipe just to get all the way down in there. Sometimes the air nozzles have a really long air nozzle. Mine's just a short one. And then we'll take our rag, put it at the bottom here so we don't get anything in our face. And we'll just blow inside. Okay, that was dry. Dry. So far, pretty good. All right, let's do our downside ones. That one had a little in it. All right, now one last time with the rag, just to be 100%. And if anything came up when we were doing that, nice. Now we'll get this really good here so our TV can stick. Okay, perfect. Okay, now it's time to bolt stuff back onto the head. We have our VVT solenoid over here. We'll put just a little oil on the ring, just so it slides in. Okay, that'll go in here. Okay. We got our two cam position sensors. Same thing, just a little oil on that ring. Doesn't take a lot, just enough to coat it. We got one here. 
Then we got our coolant temp sensor. We wanna use a thread sealer. So we have like the nylon tape with a couple of turns around it. That works really well. Or any kind of sealer so we don't get a leak past the threads. Let's see what else we got. We have a couple of these brackets. They go somewhere. I don't remember where. Uh, maybe over here somewhere. So I'll look back at the service information. I'm not worried about these at the moment. Just want these sensors so that when we put it on, they're not in this weird, crazy spot that we can't get to. All right, with our new exhaust gasket, we wanna put it on shiny side in, dark side out. Okay, make sure our towels aren't pinched in there, perfect. I'm gonna put this on now. It does make it a little heavier, but I just feel like torquing it might be easier. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's easy to torque just as easy from down below, but I don't wanna have to worry about it. I'm actually just gonna move this off the table just a smidge. There we go. Snug them up first. All right, let's get a torque. Okay, these are 36 to 39 foot pounds, and it's a crazy torque pattern. I'll throw up on the screen for you. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna go through and double check. They all have torque. All right, perfect. Okay, so back on our block, we're just gonna put that little bit of RTV right here on this leg. Just a little bit. Doesn't take a lot because it'll squish out just to prevent an oil leak out of that spot. Now we'll lay our gasket down. Just a tip, all the aftermarket suppliers like Felpro, Mall, they didn't have these in stock. So we had to get them from the dealer. So plan accordingly. There seems to be a shortage of these. Now we'll also put a little on top for the same reason, just preventing an oil leak. Okay, that should just squish out. I'm just gonna drape some lint-free rags over here. So I know I'm gonna have to set the head down at least once. Here we go. Oh my gosh. All right. Now I'm just taking one more peek at the underside of my head just to make sure it is nice and free of any lint or debris. Okay. Now let me get inside. Let me move you just a little. All right. The ticket when setting this down is to try to set it directly down. We don't want any sliding around if at all possible because we don't want this dowel to scratch our head surface. Okay, so let me crawl inside. Oh my gosh. All right, you ready? Here we go. Oh, maybe not. Let me get in a better position. Well, straight down. There we go. And then the we are set in. Woo! Got it. Okay, let's pull our cams out and then get our head bolts in and torqued. All right, I'm glad I checked. New head bolts. The manual says do not apply engine oil on the threads. A lot of times manufacturers will have you apply a little engine oil. Kia says do not apply engine oil. You should have two without washers. Use the washers that came off the old one and that's just for the front here. We want the washer in first, otherwise it won't clear. And then the bolt. Okay, we'll just load them all in. Check your threads too before putting them in just to make sure all your threads are good. There's just a couple of little boogers on this one I'll get with a file. 26 foot pounds is our first pass, then 90, then 90. I'll throw the torque sequence up on the board. And we wanna make a couple of passes. So one, two, three, four, however that torque sequence is, 26 one time, and then go through it again. Because as the head gasket is compressing, your initial bolts won't be as tight as everything is sinking down. So go through it once, 26, go through it a second time, 26, and then go through it a third time, just to be 100% sure that we are starting at 26 foot pounds. I might have said 36 in there. I meant 26 if I did. Now that we have our 26, we're going to get our 90s. Colored marker. We're going to mark our bolt at the top here. So in this direction, we're going to do that on all of them. Then when we do our 90, it'll look like this. And then when we do our second 90, it'll come back around and look like how we started. Okay. I think I got them all. Perfect. So same torque sequence. So we're just getting our first 90. Okay, double check and make sure we got all of them. Okay, now our second 90. Last one. Got our head torque down. All right, let's take a water break. When we get back, we'll keep going.
All right, now any RTV that's squished out towards our timing cover, we'll just get that off. I'll do that to this side. We'll put new RTV there when we're ready for our cover. So let's throw our cams on. What I'm gonna do is just lubricate each cap and then each groove or slot where our cam goes, a little bit of oil, doesn't have to be crazy. Actually wipe this one, we have a bearing that we'll put in there. Okay, there we go, just tap it in. Perfect, and then we'll lubricate that right there. Okay, now we are cylinder one top dead center, so we wanna put our cam right there where it'll be. Then I'm gonna lubricate where our caps go just the cam a little. Remember, we wanna put them right back in the same order. E1, two, three, four, with the arrow pointing in. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to this side. Just drop it in. Okay, like that. Lube. So it doesn't start up dry. These caps also will be facing in. One, two, three, four. Just snug, we'll walk it down. All right, let's get a torque spec. Okay, before we torque these down, we actually have to put this on. So we wanna clean the bottom surface, scrape any RTV or anything off, and then we wanna clean it with a little bit of brake clean and a rag. A little bit of brake clean, so our RTV can stick. We just wanna clean it off really well. These little holes here, and then here. Okay, we wanna clean off the head. And those holes are there, and then on this side. So where the RTV is kind of hard to explain, but it's a little over here, around each bolt hole, and then a little over here. I'm gonna throw that picture up on the screen so that you're able to see it, but pretty much this oil from our timing stuff, we don't want to seep on this side of our bearing cap. Same over here, we don't want it to seep on that side. So we're just creating a, a barrier. Okay, let me just show you what mine looks like. Not that mine is right, just so you can get an idea of what I think it's supposed to look like. So we got this side here. We're just preventing any oil from in here getting out in that direction. So that's my little shape going around the bolt holes. Reason why we're going around the bolt holes again is to prevent seepage in that area. And then over here, the same. We don't want any of this getting out in that direction. So this is what I think the picture is showing me to do. Okay, now we'll just throw our cap on. We can put just a little oil on our bearings. Not a lot. We don't want to get it on our surfaces where the RTV is going to be. Just a little. Our bearings, perfect, perfect. I'm gonna wipe off some of that excess. All right. Make sure you have that bearing in it. One does not have a bearing, it's just a cutout for the cam, so it's just a cam cap. This cam cap has a bearing, that's the exhaust side. Okay, straight down. We got our four bolts. Snug those. Okay, so torque sequence is in two different steps. Our small ones are four foot pounds or four and a half, and our big ones are 11 foot pounds. The sequence is these first, followed by our big ones, and then the rest. So that'll be our first pass, four and a half, 11, and then four and a half. These are 11. Our second pass is nine and a half, 26, and then nine and a half. Okay, we'll just wipe off any RTV that's squished out. That will be on our mating surface for our timing cover. Just a little on this side, a little on this side. It'll get new RTV when we're ready for the cover. And then over here, where our valve cover will be meeting, we wanna just clean that off as well. That'll get new RTV with our valve cover. All right, we're making good progress. Let's go ahead and jump over. We'll get our timing set. All right, we wanna put our chain on. The two colored links closest to each other are for the cams. And then that far away one is for the crank. All right, we wanna rotate the cam just a little more. Rotate this one just a little. There we go. Just to get them a little closer, maybe just a little more than that. There we go. So they do have a spot for a wrench. My biggest one is one and one eighteenth, and it is not big enough. So I just use a pair of vice grips, that's okay. If you're gonna use vice grips, you can use this slot here that they already have or this spot down here where it doesn't rub on anything, nothing is using this spot. It's just part of the shaft. And we have our guide, put that on. Snug that down. Double check our crank mark. So we're off one tooth on the crank, which is fine. So our cams are good where they are. I'm gonna move the crank just a little. 
All right, we are good. So I just had to move it just a smidge. Then we have our tensioner arm. Put that on. There we go. So we got our new tensioner. Put that on. I'm gonna see, it might actually be easier to do this from down below. It is easier from down below. All right, we'll double check our timing marks. Looks good up top. Looks good down below. Let's torque everything down. Everything is 8.7 foot pounds. To convert foot pounds to inch pounds, just multiply that by 12, you get 104.4. So if you have an inch pounds instead of a foot pounds, that's the conversion. Okay, let me show you the timing marks. So our top one there is lined up. This one over here also lined up. And then come down below, let me turn the light on. That one right there, can you see the dot? Is also lined up. Perfect. Now we can pull our pin. All right, and we'll turn the crank clockwise to take out any slack in that chain. All right, our timing is set. Let's prep for our cover. We just wanna make sure our surface is nice and clean, RTV free. Before doing the timing, you can scrape uh, just down both sides really well, get all that RTV off. We'll be applying new RTV on our timing cover side. All right, clean rag, a little bit of brake clean. I'm just gonna wipe off our whole mating surface. Okay. I'm going to go underneath and get the rest. So now on our cover, we're going to go to the inside of every bolt hole all the way around. And then we have three in the middle. We'll just circle each of those bolt holes and then a bead on the bottom. Same thing inside of the bolt holes. Just a bead. Move this over. Do a bead on the bottom. And because this is the oil pan, we can go ahead and go around each bolt. Give us a little extra protection. Okay. All right, now let's set this aside. Now we want RTV here. This cam cap where it meets the head, there's a little seam. You just want to make sure that there's enough. Now it should only be a little because you already have some on the cover. Same here, this little seam. All this is doing is just ensuring a good seal. It doesn't take a, a lot. It's a little dab. Okay, down below. Now in the corner where the oil pan meets the block, the corner of that oil pan, we want to put a bead right in the corner. If you have the crank bolt on because you were spinning the engine, we want to pop that off first. Okay, let's feed this in and try not to get that RTV on anything. Just straight down. Perfect, just like. Okay, just like that. We'll get a couple bolts threaded in real quick. Nice, we'll get a couple more on the bottom and then just two more in the middle. Now we just want to snug that up until the RTV just starts to squish out. Nice. Okay, get our 10 mils. Now our bottom ones. All right, we'll just let that set up for about an hour. Then we'll come back and torque everything. All right, the 12 millimeter bolts are 16.6 foot pounds and the 10 millimeter bolts are 7.2. Now I don't have torque spec for the oil pan, but I imagine that would be the same. 7.2 for the 10 mil. There are four 12 millimeter bolts for that bracket. I guess 16.6 sounds good to me. And then we'll tighten up our AC compressor. Next, we got this. Put this back on. What I'm gonna do first is let's just get a little bit of oil or a lubricant on this seal here so it slips over nice and easy. Okay, there we go. Looks like we have 8.7 foot pounds for this and just a crisscross pattern. Starting up, then down, over, and over. All right, let's torque that. All right, now we have our mounting bracket. We'll put that in like that. We've got our long one goes on the top right, and everything else goes in. Now I got a couple of goofy ones. Not sure if yours looks like this or not, but the little bolt is a different torque than the rest, but all the other bolts are the same. Snug them up. So our big bolts are 32 and a half, and our one small bolt is 18 foot-pounds. All right, let's put this bad boy back on. Let's get a torque for those. All right, these are 65 foot-pounds. We got our big guy. And these are 79 and a half, pretty much 80. Nice, now we can pull the jack out from underneath. For a water pump pulley, you can't get a torque wrench on there, so good and snug. 
They are small 10 millimeter bolts, so you don't want to over tighten them. And then our automatic belt tensioner is 18 foot pounds. So you want just a little bit of oil coating this so it goes right into our seal nice and smooth. And then just a tad bit of RTV right here in this keyway so we don't get a leak of oil coming out of our keyway. And that is torqued to 38 foot pounds plus 82 degrees. So next I'm gonna put the spark plugs in and then we can pop on our valve cover. Let's hand tighten these in. Your plugs do not need to be gapped. They come pre-gapped from the factory because these iridium tips are so thin. Even if you try to gap it, you could damage the tip on it. So just trust what the manufacturer did. You can examine it and if it looks way off from the others, then you know something's wrong and you could just get another one, a replacement. All right, I don't know the torque on these. Typically they're around 13 to 15 foot pounds. They have a little crush washer, so you wanna make sure that washer is crushed, then you'll feel it bottom out. All right, nice. Now our valve cover is a one piece gasket, has the spark plug tube seals and everything together, so it only goes on one way, just like that. Okay. Just where this crease is, where this cap and the head meet, there's that little crease. Just put a little RTV, then same on the other side. Next, we wanna put our fuel pump housing on. Okay, then just straight down. Okay, just to speed things up, let me give you some torque specs. These are eight foot pounds. Our intake manifold is 18 foot pounds. We still have our exhaust over here. Let me get that torque. These are 36 to 39 foot pounds. Then we just have various connectors, hoses, little brackets and things like that. If I come across anything on the installation, I'll go ahead and pause and be sure to explain it. Otherwise, it'll just be a time lapse with a little bit of background music. All right, we did it. We got it all back together. Let's fill it up with oil, fill it up with coolant. You can see it's still burping in there. So we'll just let it keep burping until it settles out. 
All right, while the coolant's still burping, just run through a few things. There is no break-in procedure when doing a head job. Uh, it's not like the bottom end where you do rings and you have to break it in. Uh, with a head gasket, with the head resurfaced the way it was and cleaned up the way it was, there is no break-in procedure. Start it up, you're good to go. Now when we start it up, we just wanna check for any leaks, oil leaks, coolant leaks, anything like that. So I don't have the skid plate on or the undercover plate. I have it off so any drips are super easy to see. Serpentine belt. I did not film putting that back in. I just couldn't get a, a good angle. So I apologize. There are other YouTube videos out there just for that water pump because that's a stretch fit belt. Uh, so there's a little technique to it. Other than that, there was a heat shield in the back that I forgot, but any heat shield is easy to get on after the fact, so no big deal there. There were two bolts. I was like, what? Where are these bolts? I couldn't figure them out. They were uh, short but fat, so they were substantial bolts, nice and clean, so I knew they were an external bolt, but I could not figure it out. And then it dawned on me, the intake manifold has two bolts underneath holding it in, so there's that bracket underneath. So. Uh, if you're like, what are these bolts? Check there. Maybe uh, you did what I did and just forgot that there's two bolts that go down there. Uh, other than that, just check your routing of everything. It should all fall into place. It should feel good. If you're kind of stretching something or it just doesn't feel right with the routing, just play around and, and find the right routing. We don't want any of the wires or hoses rubbing on stuff, especially with the hose clamps. If a hose clamp is angled away and it has those two pointy things that you clamp onto, if those pointy things are too close to a hose, it, it could rub. Uh, so just maybe move those out of the way. I think that's about it. So I'm just gonna keep it bleeding, keep it burping, keep filling it up, and then we'll, we'll start it up in just a second. All right, here we go, foot on the brake. Nice. No misfires, running smooth. To go outside, check our coolant, still bubbling a little take this off what we want to do is make sure that our high pressure fuel pump isn't leaking and then down here too where it connects let's make sure that's not leaking now it may smoke a little out of the tailpipe that's okay because remember we coated the cylinder walls with a little oil that'll burn off and then any of our anti-seize that we put on any of the bolts that'll kind of smoke off a little but looking good running good we'll take it for a quick test drive i'll poke around look for any leaks first nice vehicle repaired all right, that's how you can place a head gasket on a Kia Optima. Pretty labor intensive. A lot of things have to be removed, have to come off. I think leaving the exhaust manifold on was the ticket there. Yes, it did make the head heavier, but torquing those bolts uh, is a breeze on the bench. And then you don't have to struggle with trying to get them off underneath the vehicle. So for me, less time under the vehicle, the better, especially because I don't have a hoist. But that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, See you on the next one.